In this video, we're gonna show you how we put railings around the treehouse. Cause we really need them. Fly, you fools. This video was sponsored by AG1, my athletic greens. <laughs> Just kidding. Are you recording yet? Oh, okay. All right, people. We're gonna put railings on the decking on the treehouse. Now, I went back and forth a lot on what type of railings to put up here. Railings, banisters, whatever you wanna call them. For a long time, I was thinking wood because everything else is wood and I'm a wood worker. But the problem with wood is you have to either paint it or stain it and then that doesn't last forever. Eventually, because it's outside, you're gonna have to repaint it and restain it, you're dealing with rot. I don't love the way that wood railings look. So then I started looking at metal, having something custom fabricated. That was incredibly expensive, but I found a really cool system. Now, let me preface this by saying I am in no way sponsored by the company that makes these railings. I just found them, I think they're cool, and anybody can put a metal railing around a deck, or awning, banister, balcony, where else do you need a deck? Boat? Um, anyways, I'm gonna show you how this whole system works. I think it's cool, follow along, and then maybe you can put some metal railings up yourself. Alrighty, okay? Okay, let's do it. So the system I found is from a company called Fortress Railing Products. Now again, I am not being paid by them to show you how their product works. I just needed some railings, found their product, liked the way they looked, and they turned out to be pretty easy to install, so I thought, what the heck, why don't I show you how to install them, in case you ever want to put railings on anything. So basically, you get all these parts and pieces. You get the posts, you get the actual railing sections that come in different lengths, and then you get a whole bunch of connectors and fasteners and a box that you probably shouldn't leave out in the rain because the box starts to fall apart. I didn't find any instructions in with all these pieces, so we're just gonna grab a bunch of pieces and start making this up as we go. I figured the first thing I had to do was install the actual posts that we're gonna hook all the railings into. So I unpackaged the posts. Now, when I ordered all this stuff, you order all the pieces for your specific area that you need a railing. So they come with all these brackets pre-attached. You can see this is a corner post because it's got brackets coming off both sides. So all you really have to do is figure out where you want your post to land and bolt it to your deck. But we needed some blocking underneath the deck so that we'd have something to bolt it securely to. So I measured out the spaces in between our joists underneath. I found this old piece of pressure treated 4x4 and I cut down some appropriate sized blocks. Once I had a few blocks cut down, I just hammered them up underneath my deck there so that I would have something to bolt that post to. Once I got it up in there, I just took it in place with a few screws from the outside so it wouldn't flop around while I got my bolts in from the top. And voila, we were ready to go. Now I figured it was probably pretty important that I put these posts in nice and plumb, but my deck wasn't level at all, so this was a little tricky. So I just hooked some screws in on the back of the post just to get it held securely in place because it needed to go back towards those screws. I then stuck some shims on the front and I kept an eye on that level until everything was nice and plumb. And then I screwed in the post on the front. I just went right through those shims and in hindsight, I probably should have used cedar shims because this is gonna be outside and I don't want them to rot, but I didn't. So in 15 years when these pine shims disintegrate, I might have to redo this, but for now, it seems pretty darn sturdy. I was actually impressed. Just four big screws on the bottom, and then once I had it screwed securely in place, you put over this nice decorative cover to make everything look all fancy. And you add a few screws into that so it doesn't come undone, and boom, post is installed. 
I think my biggest concern in this entire installation was dropping these tiny little screws off the edge of the deck into the bark chips, because if that happens, there's no getting them back. So I made sure to go slow and take my time. Once I had a post on one corner done, I did a post on the other side, measuring so that it came back from the edge of the deck the same distance as my first post, and shimmed and everything to get that post nice and plumb and level and all that jazz. Boom. Now the longest the railing sections come in are 92 inches. So if you have a run over 92 inches, you have to break it up with another post. Obviously the front of our deck was over 92 inches, so we needed to put one more post right in the middle. And then we can cut our railing sections to just drop into those already installed brackets that came pre-installed on our post system. So after getting those first three posts in place, all I had to do was measure the distance in between the brackets and cut some railing to that length. This is what the railing looks like. It's already powder coated, pre-welded black steel, so it's pretty much ready to go. You just have to cut it down to the right size. So I pulled the railing out of the package and I marked on the top and bottom where I needed to make my cuts. Now, I think you could probably cut this railing just with an angle grinder or even a metal blade on a sawzall, but I had this metal chop saw. So why not use that? It looks way cooler. And I thought it would make a much cleaner cut. So we just trimmed it down however much we needed on the top and the bottom. Also taking into consideration that we kind of wanted to leave even spacing on both sides between our posts. So sometimes we had to chop some down on one side and some down on the other side. But once we had our railing chopped down, all we had to do was run it up there and slide it into those brackets. Just like this. It would have been really cool if it just dropped perfectly into place right there, but it actually is a little tricky because you got to line up the brackets on the top and the bottom all at the same time, but it's not too bad. And then, boop, it just slides in there. We'll come back and we'll permanently fix this with a little set screw on all four of those brackets later. But for now, it's on to cutting more railing and sticking them between our posts. I mean, seriously, isn't this a pretty darn easy way to add metal railing to your deck? Eh, nope, don't climb over it. The other thing I like about this system is that you don't have to just use it with the posts. When you run into a section like this that's going to terminate at the actual building, you can just install the brackets directly to the building, and then you don't have a situation where there's a post awkwardly close to a building. It just looks a lot nicer and cleaner. So to figure out exactly where I needed the brackets to land on the building, I cut a section of railing the right length to fit in between that gap, and then I just used the railing to kind of mark out where I needed those brackets to land. The brackets that you attach to the building are identical to the ones that are attached to the post, so all you gotta do is figure out where they need to go and screw them on. Of course, I wanted to make sure that my railing was level and square to the building so everything looked good and not too wonky. Yes, I am just gonna screw these to the trim, but right behind the trim is a solid two x four stud. And the screws are long enough to penetrate the trim and make it into that stud, so I know the railing will be very secure. So once I got marked out where I wanted these brackets to land, I just screwed them in on the top and on the bottom and slid my section of railing in. And we are well on our way to having a safe and secure deck so no kids plummet off and break their neck. Hey, that kind of rhymed. Safe and secure deck, don't break your neck. What the heck? Bow, chicka, wow, wow, bow. Just like how we installed the brackets directly to the treehouse, we were also able to install brackets directly to these posts that already existed for the suspension bridge. Once we got the decking in front of the treehouse itself done, we started working on the deck around our tower leading to the treehouse. Now this one is a little more complicated because we're going to have to incorporate stairs into the equation. And you might be wondering, well stairs are at an angle, how is that going to work? Well, don't worry, I'll show you when we get there. For now, we just had to get all of our posts installed and do the normal square portion of the tower. 
So we got all of our posts screwed in, got those decorative little cover plates on the bottom, and cut all of our railing sections to length. Once we slid those in, the top was looking pretty good. Now you might be wondering why there's an open section in the middle right there. Well, don't worry. I got something kind of special planned for that opening, and you're just going to have to wait and see. But you don't want to see that. Nobody wants to see that. Anyways, I just kept installing brackets, installing posts, hooking them directly into those existing posts from the bridge, and before too long, the entire top of our little tower was completely covered in railing and looking pretty good. Now onto those stairs. Now the stairs are gonna be a little different. Instead of the posts sitting directly on the decking, we opted for these side mount posts so that we didn't, you know, decrease the amount of space you had to walk up the stairs. In order to figure where our posts needed to be on the upper deck to tie into the lower posts, I just leaned that side mounted post back and then marked right where I needed to land my posts that would transition into going down the stairs. So once I got those positions figured out, I screwed them in on either side of the stairs, and then I was able to measure for my last two little sections of railing up on the top of the tower before we started putting railing in down the stairs themselves. So I cut those pieces to length. This last piece was just a single bar, but you have to remember, size doesn't matter. It's all about functionality, and a single bar will do just fine. Hey there, people. Happy holidays. This video is sponsored by AG1 from Athletic Greens. Now, I like doing these sponsorships because this is one of those products that I actually use on a daily basis, so it's really easy to talk about. Now, I first started taking AG1 because I was looking for something that would help support my immune system. I didn't want to get sick all the time. And AG1 is nice because it's got vitamin C and zinc and healing mushrooms, but I was pleased to find out that it does way more than just support your immune system. It also helps with energy and recovery. It helps with aging, all sorts of stuff. Around the holidays, you get busy, you're going, 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 and you're probably not getting all the things in your diet that you actually need. Vitamins, minerals. AG1 makes it so easy to make sure that you can incorporate those into your own health routine. All you do is you just take a scoop of their luscious green powder, you add it to some water and you shake it up. And the other cool thing is that it actually tastes good. I'm not just saying that. Some of these vitamin, you know, supplements, they just taste horrible. But this one, I would buy this at the store and drink it. I like the way it tastes, which makes it really easy to take it every day. So that's good. And not only does it taste good, it's good for you. This is gluten-free, dairy-free, nut-free. They don't have any artificial flavors or colorings. There's no pesticides or herbicides. It's just goodness. So you can feel good about what's going into your body. So while you're taking care of everybody else this holiday season, buying them gifts, why don't you take care of yourself for once? Go to athleticgreens.com slash bourbon moth. You can get started on your order. And right now they're gonna give my entire community a free one year supply of their immune supporting vitamin D3 plus K2. And if that wasn't good enough already, they're also gonna give you five free travel packs. So you can try it out and I know you're gonna like it. So go get some. Now when it came to the railing for the stairs, it has to be angled. Luckily they make these railing sections that are hinged on the top and the bottom so that you can kind of tilt them to whatever angle you need them to be at to match the angle of your staircase. Pretty slick, huh? We thought it was gonna be as simple as that. It turned out to be a little harder. Now see, they have these brackets, like the ones we hooked to the treehouse, but then they also have these brackets that you bolt to the post that allow the bracket for the railing to tilt to match whatever the angle needs to be for your stairs. So far, so good, pretty awesome. Just kind of hook those together and then hook those brackets onto our posts. Now, unlike the posts for the upper part of the deck, these ones didn't come pre-drilled, so we have to actually attach the brackets ourselves, which isn't hard to do. You just drill a hole through the metal, and then they come with these self-tapping metal screws. So you just drill the hole a little small and screw them on there. Not too big of a deal. So we marked out where we needed those brackets to go, and then we thought it would be easier if we just attached the railing to those brackets so it wasn't trying to 
kind of come out of the brackets and then we could position where the posts needed to be lower down on our stairs. We're gonna find out later in this video that there is a much, much easier way to do this than the way that we're doing it, but we'd never done this before, so you kind of learn as you go. Once we figured out where our post needed to go lower down, we secured that to the stairs, and then we just had to figure out where our brackets needed to land on the post. Now there was one huge issue here that we hadn't noticed yet, and it's that those slats in our railing are not parallel to the post. Yeah, we didn't realize this until after we got it all the way installed. Unfortunately, we didn't realize that the angle of the railing was gonna kinda mess up the length of the top and bottom rail and we were gonna have to make some strategic cuts to make everything parallel, but at this point, we're just ignorantly charging forward thinking everything's gonna be totally fine, which it wasn't. So like a fool, I installed the brackets on my post and then we screwed our railing to those brackets, but you can see it's way closer to the post on the bottom than at the top. But because we're not standing back and looking at it, we hadn't really noticed it until right now when we put a level on those and realized it wasn't level at all. Uh-oh. Not yet knowing quite how to fix the problem, I went ahead and secured the post with these self-tapping metal screws they provide. And to make things worse, when I was doing the last screw, the top of my bit broke off in the screw head. Darn, things are just really going our way. By the next morning, we had realized our mistake, and now we knew how to fix it. Now, if all this is confusing, don't worry, I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about right now. We missed one key step to the whole angled railing thing. You see, if we set the railing on our stairs to match the angle, we got it touching the post at the bottom. We put a level on our little slats to make sure that's level. You can see it's touching the post at the bottom. Everything's level, but at the top, it's not touching the post. So in order to get both of those sections touching the post, well, we'd have to bring those little railing slats out of plumb. So what we had to do was we had to measure the gap at the top, and then we had to remove that much material from the railing at the bottom. Once we did this, we could get the railing installed, nice and plumb and level and square to the posts and all that. But we didn't realize that the first time, so we just stuck the railing up there without cutting it and everything was out of whack. But now that we know, we should be able to fly through the rest of this. So after cutting that little bit of material off on the bottom, we added our little brackets and we stuck the whole thing back up there just to make sure that everything was gonna work the way we thought it would. Now you can see those brackets are touching on the bottom and the top and everything's level and parallel to the post. We are good to go. So we marked onto the post where the brackets needed to land. We bolted the brackets to the post and then we bolted our railing to those brackets. Then we hooked our post on the lower section of the stairs, leaving the railing just loose for now, and then we did something incredibly smart. We just clamped the railing to the post. This gave us the exact angle that we needed to cut the railing at and showed us exactly where we needed to mount our brackets. So in hindsight, we should have just mounted all of our posts, clamped all the railing on the outside, marked the railing, and cut it. We could have foregone all that fumbling around and trying to figure out angles and measurements. So if you ever do stairs and use this railing system, just put your railings up first, clamp your railing to the outside of the posts, mark them, cut them, install them. It's that easy. And don't forget your safety glasses or you're gonna look like this when you're cutting the railing down to size. But my eyes are safe and the railing was cut appropriately. So after struggling through the first section of railing on the stairs and looking like a bunch of doofuses, well, now we had it pretty much figured out. And the other nice thing was since we had one section done, we could just take the measurements off of our first section and pretty much just duplicate it over on the other side. So the other side took about an eighth of the amount of time as the first side because we didn't really have to think. We could just measure, install, and go. So. Being the smart lads we were, we installed our posts, we clamped the railing to the posts, marked, measured, cut down our railing, put our brackets up, everything was plumb, level, looking good, so we installed our first post. 
Then after getting that first post installed without breaking off the tip of my driver bit, we installed our lower post and once again just clamped the railing up there. Look, amazing, so much easier. The things you learn from experience. Once it was clamped up there, I could just hold the bracket in place, mark out exactly on the railing and the post where the bracket needed to land, take everything down, cut it, put it back up, and I knew it was gonna be perfect. So after we got our brackets installed to the posts and our railing cut down for our last section, we slid it into place and it looked, well, almost like we knew what we were doing. And when I say almost, it's because I forgot a key thing. These posts for the stairs come longer than you need them. And I got the entire left side installed and realized I forgot to cut the post down to length. So the post on the left was taller than the post on the right. So after saying that everything went together seamlessly, which it almost did, we had to take it all apart, mark our posts, cut the post down to the right length, and then put everything back together again. Fortunately, this didn't take too long, and finally we had all of our posts and railings installed. Now it was time to make them look all pretty. Along with the kit comes these nice little caps that you can put on the end of each post so that water doesn't sit down in the posts and it looks pretty nice and clean. You just kind of pound them into place with a rubber mallet. Oh yeah, looks pretty good. And then they make these nice metal bracket covers. Now you just choose how you want to screw your railing into the bracket, either on the inside or the outside. So there is a screw on the other side holding that railing firmly in place. And then you just stick these little metal bracket covers over each bracket. This also keeps water from sitting down in there and gives it a much nicer, cleaner look. And with that, our railing system was entirely installed. There was just one more special project I wanted to do for my son. Now, you saw earlier on that I left that one section of railing opened up. Well, that's because there's stairs on a treehouse, which is kind of cool. But most of the time, kids don't want to go upstairs. They want to climb on things. So I decided to add a little climbing feature so that if they didn't want to go up the stairs, well, there'd be another option for getting up to the treehouse itself. So the first thing I did was cover that entire front side of the tower with some more pressure treated lumber. This would give me a surface to mount my climbing apparatuses, which are these. I got on Amazon and I found these treehouse ladder rungs. At least that's what they were advertised as. So thinking, since I'm building a treehouse, these should work just fine, I took the time to very carefully install them all, making sure they were nice and level and evenly spaced out. You know, really putting thought and care into my work as I went. Once I got them all installed, I called out the foreman to give him a little test run. He came out and willingly tried to climb up them. And that's when I realized, well, you can't tell here, but as he's climbing up them, I'm seeing that those things are flexing quite a bit. And it has me a little worried about the strength of these so-called Amazon treehouse ladder rungs. So after he climbed up them, I gave him the old strength test. What the heck? Who would think these are okay for a treehouse? They immediately busted right off. That's obviously not gonna work. I haven't overbuilt this entire treehouse to this point just to put some cheap flimsy ladder rungs on the front of it at the last minute. So off to the big box store to buy a bunch of bits and bobs from the galvanized piping section. If the ladder I bought on Amazon's not gonna work, I'll just make my own. Huh? Look at that beefy boy. That's gotta work as a ladder rung. So I removed all the cheap plastic Amazon wannabe ladder rungs and I switched them out with these makeshift galvanized pipe ladder rungs because I wanna be able to hang on these myself. It's not just Ivor that's gonna be climbing up these. I'm gonna be climbing up them too. Once again, I called Ivor out and he gave him the old one-two test. Uh, we waved at the neighbors who were walking by, questioning all of my life decisions. And once Ivor climbed up them, it was my turn. Now these ones did flex a little bit because I'm ginormous, but they were very sturdy and secure and I was much more confident in how they were gonna work. And with that, the railings were up, 
the ladder was installed and the treehouse was one step closer to being done. And it looks pretty darn good to boot. You can walk up the stairs, you can climb down the ladder, and you can play at your leisure. There's still one more thing that we're gonna do to the front of this, and that is add a slide off of the deck right outside the door. But the slide's not here yet, so that'll have to wait for another video. For now, there is just one thing left to do. I mean, if you want a metal railing and you don't want to fabricate one yourself and you don't want wood because you don't want it to rot, this is a great option. I will put a link to this product in the video description along with everything else we used. So check it out down there. And also, uh, well, our website's closed for the holidays, so you can't get merchandise, but you could still sign up for Cameo down there. Okay, until next time.